Think the slow cooker is only good for soups and stews? I'm about to rock your world with five creative meal ideas and they are just perfect for freezer meal prep. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Taylor from The Girl on Bloor. I'm all about sharing easy meal prep strategies that you can save time, money, and stress. Okay, so the number one thing that I hear from people when it comes to the crock pot is that it produces sort of mushy, bland meals or these old school comfort foods that maybe some people just aren't into anymore. And I get it, why invest in yet another kitchen appliance if you're not gonna use it all that much? Well, the slow cooker is quite versatile, you guys. Not only is it amazing for leaving on all day, filling your home with the aromas of good cooking, but you basically cook dinner hands off so that you can go out and do other things that you like to do. Just add everything in by noon and dinner is ready by evening. And you'd be surprised at the variety of meals you can make in it. Today I'll be showing you how to make lasagna, beef stroganoff, chicken tikka masala, turkey chili, and of course a classic chicken noodle soup to get you through the cold winter months. All of these meals can be frozen for later so you can go ahead and prep everything hands off and then divide into servings and glass bowls and freeze for up to three months. I'll be going over reheating instructions at the end of this video. I also want to point out that the slow cooker is not just great for winter meals but also for making food in the summer as well because you don't have to turn on your oven and heat up the whole house. I could go on and on about the benefits of crock pot cooking but I think that we should dive into the food already. So let's get started. We'll make the chicken tikka masala first. This one is a favorite of mine. The sauce is much easier to make than you think and the slow cooker makes the chicken so much more tender than cooking on the stovetop. Start by prepping your ingredients. You'll dice up one large or two small yellow onions, mince two cloves of garlic, and grate one tablespoon of fresh ginger. From there, you'll dice up one pound of chicken breast. Now you can start adding everything to your slow cooker. See how easy the prep was? Add two tablespoons of butter to the bottom of the slow cooker, spreading it around so nothing sticks to the bottom. Add your onions, chicken, garlic, and ginger. Then you'll add one tablespoon of brown sugar to cut the acid from the tomatoes that we'll be adding in just a second. This ingredient is totally optional, but I do think it adds a nice flavor. Now for the spices. You'll want to add one tablespoon of garam masala, which is a blend of spices originating in South Asia and particularly common in Indian cuisine. Lots of major grocery stores in North America carry it now, but you can always check out local markets if you're having trouble finding it. I always head to the House of Spice in Toronto because it has everything. There are tons of recipes online to make your own, and when you Google it, you'll see that it contains coriander, cumin, cinnamon, and cardamom, among the other ingredients. I just prefer to use this blend because it's easier than making your own. Once you add in your garam masala, you'll add in two teaspoons of turmeric, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of chili powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. You may want to season with more salt in the end, so just a heads up. Now that you're done with your spices, you'll go ahead and add one can of crushed tomatoes. Stir everything up to combine, then you'll cook on high for three hours or on low for six hours. Because the chicken is diced up, you don't need as much cooking time as the average slow cooker recipe. It'll cook much faster. In the last hour to 45 minutes of cooking time, you'll want to make your rice if you'd like to serve some along with your tikka masala, so I recommend cooking that in a rice cooker while your chicken finishes off. Add one cup of basmati rice to a rice cooker or a pot on the stove, then add in one and a quarter cups of water. Add one teaspoon of butter to prevent sticking and a pinch of salt for some flavor, then let that all cook until the liquid is absorbed. The rice cooker allows you to do this hands off, so I prefer this method. They're reasonably priced too, so there's really no excuse not to get one. When your tikka masala is done, you'll stir in half a cup of sour cream and then you're ready to serve. Divide your rice among four bowls, then add your chicken and the creamy sauce. Garnish with some fresh cilantro if you'd like and serve with some fresh naan bread. The perfect comfort food in a bowl. You can go ahead and freeze individual servings of the chicken and rice together for up to three months in glass containers. Then you can reheat from frozen in the microwave for six to seven minutes, stirring partway through. Just make sure to sprinkle some water over top so the rice doesn't dry out. Okay, our second slow cooker recipe is this delicious and super simple lasagna. Yes, you really can make this classic pasta dish in the crock pot and you don't even need to cook the noodles first either. So what you're going to do is dice up one yellow onion and mince two cloves of garlic. You can stop right here if you want this to be a meat and cheese based lasagna, but I'm a fan of adding extra veggies, so I usually add some sliced mushrooms and I dice up a bell pepper. I'm doing half yellow and half red here for some color. If you're feeling lazy but still want to get your veggies in, then you can just use some baby spinach. Finally, you'll want to grate two cups of mozzarella cheese if you aren't using the pre-grated stuff. Personally, I find the best mozzarella cheese is a ball of pizza mozzarella, so look out for that if you can. Now that we've got that little bit of prep out of the way, let's get to cooking. 
Heat a large skillet over medium high heat, then add one pound of extra lean ground beef. Be sure to use extra lean so that you don't have to drain it. Break that up with a spoon, let it brown a little bit, then add onions, garlic, veggies, and half a teaspoon each of salt and pepper. When your beef is brown and the veggies are tender, add one jar of pasta sauce. You'll need two jars of pasta sauce for this recipe, so that is something to keep in mind. Stir it all together to combine and remove from heat. Now you're ready to assemble in your crock pot. Spray your slow cooker with cooking spray, then layer in, add lasagna noodles over top. I've tested this recipe with both regular lasagna noodles and oven ready ones, and both work just as well, so go with whatever your preference is. As you're adding your lasagna noodles, you'll find that you might have to break some of them up to get them to fit in one even layer, so just do the best that you can here. Don't worry if it looks a little bit messy. Now you'll add your cheeses. You'll need a tub of ricotta cheese, and then you'll have your two cups of grated mozzarella on hand, and you'll divide both of these among all the layers, so just do your best to eyeball it. You should end up with about three layers total, and each layer should be about one inch thick, so those are just some benchmarks to keep in mind as you build your lasagna. Spread about a third of the tub of ricotta cheese across the lasagna noodles and add in more meat sauce. Now repeat the process. Add more lasagna noodles, add more ricotta, and more meat sauce. Then once more, add your remaining third of ricotta and more meat sauce, topping with one more layer of lasagna noodles. Pour another jar of pasta sauce over top of the whole thing, then add half a cup of water along the sides of the lasagna, as that will help the lasagna noodles cook all the way through. Finally, you can top with two cups of mozzarella cheese and cook on high for three hours or on low for six hours. It's that easy. When the lasagna is finished, top with fresh basil or parsley if you'd like, and then serve and enjoy. Now this is a little bit of a challenge to get all the slices out, but once you are able to, lift the first one out and then it gets easier from there. I recommend storing individual servings in two cup containers, then you can either refrigerate for five days or freeze up to three months. Then you can reheat from frozen for seven to eight minutes, sprinkling some water over top and stirring part way through. I also like to freeze in foil containers so that I can reheat in the oven from frozen. It's just a cozy, comforting feeling to have your dinner going in the oven after a long day so I really highly recommend this lasagna for meal prep. You'll love it. Moving on to our next slow cooker meal, and this one is a classic chicken noodle soup. Can't go wrong with the classics. We'll start by prepping our ingredients. Dice up one yellow onion, chop two carrots, two celery stalks, and mince four cloves of garlic. Then you'll chop up about a quarter cup of fresh herbs. I like to go with a variety such as rosemary, thyme, parsley, and sage, but you can use whatever you have on hand. You can also use two teaspoons of dried herbs. If you do this, I recommend you go with Italian seasoning as that will contain all of the herbs I just mentioned. Once you've got that little bit of prep done, you'll add one tablespoon of olive oil to your crock pot, followed by one pound of boneless, skinless chicken breast. Add everything you just chopped up, along with half a teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of pepper, six cups of chicken broth, half a cup of frozen corn, and a half a cup of frozen peas. Cook on high for four hours or on low for eight hours. When there's just half an hour left of cooking time to go, you'll add in two cups of dry rotini pasta. Let it continue cooking, then remove and shred your chicken before adding back to your pot. Easy peasy chicken noodle soup is ready to serve. This one can also be frozen for up to three months, but the noodles do soak up some of that liquid, so when reheating, you'll probably need to add some water and salt, whether you're reheating from frozen or from the fridge. I love keeping lots of bowls on hand in the freezer for days when I'm craving something comforting or for when I'm feeling under the weather. You just can't go wrong with chicken noodle soup. Okay, our second last slow cooker meal is this amazing beef stroganoff, another comfort food favorite for those cold winter days. Start by quartering two cups of mushrooms, then mince four cloves of garlic, and dice one yellow onion or two shallots for deeper flavor as I'm doing here. With that little bit of prep out of the way, you can start adding everything. Add two tablespoons of butter, spreading it around the bottom of the crock pot to grease it. Then you'll add one pound of stewing beef. I've been told that this is more of a Canadian grocery store thing, so feel free to use any type of beef that you'd like. Cheaper cuts like rump roast, top round, or chuck work perfectly here because the slow cooker gets them nice and tender, but if you're feeling fancy, you could dice up a top sirloin or a New York strip steak, so just go with your preference here. After you add your beef, add in your mushrooms, minced garlic, and diced onions, followed by half a teaspoon each of salt and pepper, a quarter cup of red wine, one tablespoon of Worcestershire, and half a cup of beef broth. The red wine is optional here, but recommended for much deeper flavor. White wine also works, but make sure it's a dry white. Otherwise, you can just leave it out altogether without needing to add any more liquid. The mushrooms will naturally release some liquid as they cook, so you are good on that front. Cook that all on high for four hours or on low for eight hours. For this recipe in particular, I do recommend cooking on low for eight hours 
hours just to get the meat as tender as possible. So listen to me if you want the best results. When the stroganoff is close to being done, like within five or 10 minutes of finishing, you'll cook a 12 ounce package of egg noodles in boiling water. They should be done in about three to five minutes. You want them to be slightly undercooked so they soak up some of the sauce, so watch them closely. Drain them and then get ready to add them in with your beef. Remove the lid from your slow cooker, stir in your sour cream and mix well to combine. Then you can add your noodles and toss to coat. Let the mixture sit with the lid on, but the heat off for five minutes as the sauce will thicken up and then you are good to serve and enjoy. I like to garnish with a little bit of fresh parsley and of course enjoy it with a nice glass of red wine. This is the perfect dish to curl up on the couch with. Now if you want to freeze this one, you could freeze it as is with the noodles, but for best results, I recommend storing the meat-based sauce in the freezer up to three months, then reheat in the microwave for four to five minutes from frozen and in that time, cook your egg noodles fresh. You won't even notice it's a freezer meal this way. Okay, now for our final recipe, and that is our slow cooker turkey chili. You can do this with ground turkey or ground beef, but I use turkey to make it a little lighter. Don't worry, all the flavor is there in the end though. Start by dicing up one yellow onion, four stalks of celery, and one green pepper. Then mince four cloves of garlic. Next, you'll heat one tablespoon of olive oil in a large skillet over medium high heat. Add one pound of ground turkey or ground chicken, seasoning generously with salt and pepper. Saute for two to three minutes until lightly browned, and then you can add your crock pot right away. Add your diced onion, celery, and green pepper, followed by one cup of corn. Drain and rinse one can of kidney beans, add one can of navy or cannellini beans, then add them to your crock pot. Add in your garlic, two tablespoons of chili powder, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of coriander, one teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of pepper. If you don't feel like measuring out all of these spices, then three tablespoons of taco seasoning will work here. I make my own taco seasoning maybe once every few months by adding a large amount of all of these spices to a glass container. You can also buy it at the store. Now, you'll finally add one can of diced tomatoes to the crock pot along with two cups of beef broth. Give that all a stir, then let it cook on high for three hours or on low for six hours. If need be, you could let it cook on low for eight hours, but since you're sauteing the turkey ahead of time, it doesn't quite need that long. While it's cooking, you can prep any toppings you'd like, such as shredded cheddar cheese, sliced scallions, chopped cilantro, sliced jalapenos, or sliced avocado. I like to top my chili with cheese, scallions, and jalapenos, then dip some tortilla chips in it. It's probably my favorite slow cooker recipe, and again, it freezes fantastically. Just freeze individual portions in two cup glass containers for up to three months, then you can reheat from frozen for six to seven minutes. Leftover chili works so well on nachos, frozen fries, and salads, and it's just so versatile that this is a dish worth freezing for sure. And there you have it, my top five slow cooker recipes that can also be made ahead of time for freezer meal prep. This is one of my favorite ways to cover myself for those busy weeknights in the winter when I just don't have as much motivation to cook every night. I personally have trouble with all the darkness, so this is just something nice you can do for yourself, whether you prep a bunch of food ahead of time or just let your slow cooker take care of it so that you can rest and recharge. I hope you enjoyed these fun and creative ideas, and if you'd like me to share some more slow cooker recipes, please drop your requests in the comments below. Okay, I'm signing off. Thanks so much for hanging with me here in my kitchen and I will see you in the next video.